Welcome back guys, Tom here. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I use the Dubro hinge sliding kit for installing one of these little guys, a flat nylon hinge. Let's get started. So the process is pretty much exactly the same as the CA type hinges. We're just gonna create a slot in between the fibers of the wood. And the way you do that, again, we're starting with uh, with my horizontal stab left over from the Duelist project, if you've been following our uh, uh, podcast. Uh, I started with a center line right down the trailing edge of the stab, and I also have a very faint uh, center line drawn on the leading edge of my actual control surface. So once we've got those, uh, got those marked, um, it's a pretty simple matter. The Dubro uh, hinge sliding kit comes with this cool little guy right here. This is a centering tool. And as you can see, that it, uh, it sort of goes like an accordion uh, to accommodate different thicknesses, right? So uh, basically all you do is you uh, lay it on your trailing edge like so, give it a, whoops, I'll try that again. <laughs> lay it on your trailing edge and give it a squeeze, and then it self-centers. It centers itself right on the control surface. And you'll want to select the tool uh, that is the appropriate width. Um, and like I said on the... Uh, previous episode when I was covering the, uh, the CA type hinges, having a slot that's a little bit too wide is okay. Um, obviously you don't want a slot all the way down your trailing edge, but at the same time, you don't want a slot that's so narrow that you're really limiting yourself uh, as far as getting the hinge in there nice and square. So basically, like I said, I'm gonna line this up again. Like in the other video, I've got a, I've got a mark there. Once you've determined where you want that center of the hinge to be, you lay your uh, hinge slotting guide on here open it up, and I'm looking through the slot of this tool. Hopefully you can see this. I'm not sure you can see it, but I can see the dot where I want the center of my hinge to be, and I just centered that dot in the slot of the uh, hinge guide here. Uh, so then, once we've got that where we want it, you take the Dubro tool here, you can kind of see there, put it in the slot, and give it a kind of side-to-side -side action while pushing it in. Similar to what we were doing with an X-Acto knife, except this time we're just going straight in and we're not drawing a line down the, the trailing edge in this case. So just give that a plunge until it won't go any further. There we go. I've bottomed it out in the tool, like so. And then I'll pull it out. And then part of the, uh, the Dubro kit comes with this little hook-shaped tool right here. And this is made to do what I was talking about in our other video uh, regarding the easy type, uh, CA type hinges. This hook is designed to reach in there and pull material out of the slot. That's why I like these so much is because, as I said in that other video, I like to remove material to make room for my hinge instead of my hinge just jamming it in there and separating the fibers and possibly creating lumps in my control surface. So what I'm gonna do, and I'll try to do this at this angle so you can kind of see what I'm doing, is I'm just reaching that hook into that slot you'll notice that my tool is V-shaped, right? So it goes in there at a V angle, but it leaves all that material in between the two prongs of the tool. And that's what I'm trying to dig out of the slot. So I'm just reaching in there, kind of giving it a hook and pull. Just kind of pull that material out of the slot. Doesn't take much effort. I mean, it just takes a little time. And then you can see the stuff I've pulled out of there right here. And then I'll do the same thing from the other direction. Make sure I have a nice square slot. There we go. There's that piece. And then what I like to do just to make sure I've got it all out of there is I'll run the tool in and I'll move it over to make sure that I actually do indeed have a slot in there. And once I'm to that point, I'll take my hinge and I'll slide it in there and see if I need to go any deeper. And nope, looks like I'm, I'm right on the money there. You can see that I've got my hinge there and it hinges right on that molded uh, brake line where the hinge is supposed to do its flexing. So there we go, not too shabby. And then I'll go ahead and repeat the process. Just like, just like doing the CA hinges, 
I'll lay my control surface up here. I'll go ahead and let that hinge kind of come up. And then I'll mark right here on the leading edge of my control surfaces the, uh, the, outer, the outermost edges of that hinge so that I can get my slot in exactly the right spot. Now this becomes way more important when you're dealing with a control surface that has multiple hinge points. Like in the case of this elevator half, it would have four hinges. So I would cut the slot for the four hinges, lay my control surface under there, mark each hinge location separately, and then pull my control surface away. And now I know exactly where those hinges need to go, even if I've marked them ahead of time. Uh, so same idea as before, take my little, uh, now because this, is a, this has a beveled edge, this is our, you know, our actual leading edge of our control surface. The, um, the, the tool is not, usually is not deep enough to go all the way down and center itself nicely on the, on the leading edge of your control surface. It's okay. Um, you've got a nice center line drawn there. So if you take that tool, just like before, and I'm gonna center it right between those two marks I made, and then I'm just gonna plunge it at a, perpendicular line. I'll try to line that up there for the camera so you can see that. And then I'm just going to wiggle that thing going straight, straight down into the surface. There we go. And work that back and forth. And now it'll be a little more difficult on a solid surface because we don't have that hollow, um, in the case of the trailing edge here, we don't have that hollow back to push our material through. And that's not as important with this type of uh, tool. Um, because uh, with with the hinges that we're putting in here, they're they're uh, fairly simple uh, in design. But uh, when we get into the more complex pinned type hinges, um, the the tool we're going to demonstrate in one of our other videos will actually push material out of the back of the slot. So um, in the case of this particular example, this being a solid a solid uh, surface, you know, it's not a built up structure, it's a solid piece of wood, you just have to be careful that you're not jamming wood down into that uh, trailing edge, especially when it gets thin back here at the trailing edge. Um, you don't want to split that apart and, uh, and cause damage or bumps there like you would if you were just jamming a hinge in. So take a little more care with the, with the, tra with the uh, control surface, the elevator in this case, um, to try not to do any damage, but basically I put the tool in to about the depth that it would be that it would be at if I had used the centering tool. Hope that makes sense. Um, I think it did. Made sense in my head anyway. And then pull the tool out, and just like before, I'm going to take the hook tool here, this guy, and I'm going to use that to pull material out of that slot to make room for my hinge, so I'm not causing a bump uh, when I jam that hinge in there. So there we go, you can see that stuff kind of coming out of there. And then I'll come out of here from the other side, just like that. And again, run my tool kind of back and forth, make sure I've actually got a slot in there ready to accept a hinge. Looks like I do. And the next thing is test fitting. Um, because these hinges have a, you know, the, these, these nylon flat style, I'll pull this out of here so you can see what I'm talking about. They have, there you go, you can see that line between those holes. And that's what I'm gonna insert my hinge to, that line. Um, and because this hinge has that, that feature, already it's a, it's a center line already marked on the hinge for you. So what I do is when I use these uh, to install it, I'll give it a flex so that when I go to push my control surface on, it's not trying to push the hinge farther into the hole. If it's at an angle, there's nowhere for that hinge to go. So here we go, I'll slide that in there. Hey, look at there, pretty good fit. And because these hinges are similar to CA hinges um, in the way that they look and the way that you can install them with different, you know, the same types of tools, um, this hinge is not a hinge that you want to use CA on. Um, this hinge is pretty much uh, epoxy only. Um, I've heard of some guys using the uh, some of the other adhesives, uh, like like the aliphatic resin, the the wood glue, carpenter's glue. I've not uh, done that with that glue. I always just go straight to epoxy on these. Um, so I'll go ahead and demonstrate how uh, how to do that. So you start. I use these handy dandy little mixing cups, and this uh, <laughs> Ron's. Uh, so this is Ron's epoxy. I don't store my epoxy this way. This is just gross. Oh, cut it out. <laughs> so 
<laughs> the peanut gallery back there. Oh my goodness, this is... I'm not sure this is going to work. Yeah, there's a hole there, a little one. So pull them apart if you store them this way. And then, uh, since I'm only doing one hinge, uh, it's just a little dot of each, part A and part B. All right, looks like I can get uh, get a squeeze. There we go, a little drop of A. <laughs> uh, I can't wait to replace these. Looks like I'll be bringing my own epoxy next time, huh, Ron? You know what they say, beggars can't be choosers, right? Whoa. Okay. Wipe my hands off because they got all sticky from Ron's epoxy that he doesn't store correctly. Okay, so equal parts A, B, mix them together just like so. I'm using five minute epoxy in this case because uh, I don't think we want to hang around 30 minutes while we wait for the stuff to cure. So give that a mix. Oh, my hands are sticky and everything is sticking to me. Pull the hinge out. And the way I like to install these with epoxy is I take some epoxy, just like this, and I'll go ahead and saturate one side of the hinge, like so. And then I'll flip it over and saturate the other. That way I make sure I have epoxy in the actual holes of this particular style of hinge. And then once I've done that, I slide it into the slot, just like so. And then while it's hanging out of the slot, I'll take the rest of my epoxy and do the same thing. One side, flip it over the other, just like that. And then push that down a little bit so I'm pushing it in at an angle. Slide it in like so. And then I'll take, <laughs> I'll take a paper towel. Now this is a lot easier to do when you're when you're dealing with a control surface that's much longer. Um, but anyway, wipe off that extra epoxy. And the nice thing about doing this with epoxy is it does give you a little bit of time to get the adjustment and everything just right. So you can come back with your control surface, you can get everything lined up, push those in and get that hinge gap exactly, exactly the depth you want it. And then all that's left to do now, wait for that to cure. And that's how you, that's how I install a flat hinge with the Dubro hinge slotting kit. Pretty handy little setup. Um, I've used it lots and lots and lots of times. I've had these for many, many, many years. Uh, don't use them as much as I used to since I went to uh, using mostly Robart pin style hinges, but I do break these out from uh, time to time uh, for projects like this one. So hope you enjoyed that. Hope you learned something. Uh, be sure to check out our other videos. Thanks for watching. Thank you.